Okay, so we're in chapter seven now, and we're gonna look at solve and write equa addition equations on pages 521 through 522. So you should have pages like this in front of you. So open up your textbook now to those pages. Remember that you're gonna be writing notes as we go, and that's what you'll be showing me tomorrow in class. So the question that this section is asking is how do you solve addition equations using models? And they give us our first example. Brian played two baseball games last weekend. He got seven hits in all. He had three hits in the first game. How many hits did he get in the second game? And they want to know what do you know and what do you need to find? Which is kind of one of those things that you should be asking yourself every time you have a word problem. What do you know and what is it that it's asking for? So I'd like you to pause the video now and I'd like you to fill in what do you know and what do you need to find. So pause now. When you come back, I'll show you the answer. Okay, so what do you know? You know that he got seven hits in all, and he had three hits in the first game. And what do you need to find? How many hits did he get in the second game? So now the book is going to give us step-by-step -step directions on how to solve for how many um, hits he got in the second game. So step one says to define a variable, use the variable s to represent the number of hits Brian had in the second game. So they're telling us we're going to use the variable s to represent the number of hits Brian had in the second game. Then it wants us to use a bar diagram to help write the equation. So they've set up the bar diagram where they show um, the total length of the diagram what does that represent? So we're looking at the total length of the diagram. What does that represent? Then we want to see what the three represents and then we're going to see what we can figure out. So I want you to pause the video again and I would like for you to figure out what does the total length represent for our diagram and then what does the three represent in your diagram? And we'll pick back up on that equation in the end. Pause now. Okay, so the total length of the diagram represents the total number of hits. So this is the total number of hits. And I'm sorry that this is such bad writing, but I do not have my stylus with me. So total number of hits. And the three represents the hits from the first game. So hits from first game. Now the equation that we're going to set up, something plus something equals something, hopefully you can see that it represents that S is the number of sec games hit in the sec or number of hits from the second game, and three represents how many he got in the first game, and seven is what we're looking for in total. Now what would S need to be so that we can figure out um, how many hits he got in the second game, which is what we're looking for in our question. So step three says to work backward, rewrite the equation as a subtraction sentence and solve. So if we were rewriting this as a subtraction sentence, we would work from the backward forward. So we would do 7 minus 3. And what is 7 minus 3? Hopefully you said 4. So in the end, we find out that Brian had 4 hits in the second game. So if you come back up here and you use this bar diagram, you're going to think about this as being 4, this is 3, and so that all together we have the 7. So I hope that that makes sense. Now we're going to have you do some examples on your own and um, pause the video and then you'll come back to it. You're going to work on number one and two. Um, number one, in the 2008 Summer Olympics, the U.S. won 11 more medals in swimming than Australia. The United States won a total of 31 medals. Find the number of medals won by Australia. And the number two says a lion can run 50 miles per hour this is 20 miles per hour faster than a house cat. Find the speed of the house cat. 
So please go ahead and fill in your graph just like we did on the last one where we, um, you know, you, you're going to say what the total is that you know. Um, you're going to set up a variable and, um, you know, make sure you define the variable so we know which one you're talking about. And then label what you do know and then we'll figure out what the variable is to solve it. So please pause now and when you come back we'll go over it. Okay, for number one, hopefully you realize that the total um, diagram represents 31, which is how many the United States won, and that we're looking for the variable A, which is what I used. You could have used whatever variable you wanted to, um, but we're trying to figure out what A is if the United States won 11 more medals than Australia. So now I'm going to set up and write the equation and then solve the equation. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so my equation that I set up is 11 plus A equals 31. You could have also set it up as A plus 11 equals 31. Uh, the way that it showed us in the example to work backwards, um, we would do 31 minus the 11, and that would give us 20. To check our work, we would merely say, okay, well, if A is 20, 20 plus 11 is 31, that works out. Okay, now we're going to look at number two. All right, for number two, you'll see that I defined house cat as the variable C. Um, the total is 50, and um, a part of that is the 20 miles that it runs faster than the house cat. The C is the part that we're looking for. That's how fast the house cat actually can run. So now we need to set up our, our equation. Um, we've got 20 plus C is going to equal 50 because those two combined will equal 50. Then we need to set up the next way they had said to do it was to work backwards. So to work backwards I'm going to do 50 minus 20 and hopefully you know that 50 minus 20 is 30. I'm going to check my work and if this is 30 this will add up to 50, and sure enough, that's a check mark. Excellent. Now, the second um, activity that they're going to give us is an equation is like a balance. The quantity on the left side of the equal sign is balanced with the quantity on the right. To solve an addition equation using cups and counters, subtract the same number of counters from each side of the mat so that the equation remains balanced. So for example, just, just a mention, um, if we had 5 plus 5 equals 10, then we have a balanced situation here. 5 plus 5 makes 10, 10 is 10, so they're in balance. So keep thinking of balance when we're doing these equations. So it says solve x plus 1 equals 5 using cups and counters. And so for um, the x, we're going to use a cup. And for the plus ones, the ones values, we're going to use these little yellow circles. Um, so it says the model, model the equation, use a cup to represent x, and then our ones are our circles. It says use the above model, I'm on step two here, cross out one counter from each side so that the cup is by itself. So if we got rid of that one, we'd have to get rid of this one as well. Now, step three, it says there are blank counters remaining on the right side. So x equals blank. So the solution is blank. I'd like you to look at this and figure out how many counters are remaining on the right side. If I got rid of the one, we have four remaining. And so there are four counters remaining on the right side. So x equals Four. So they're saying that if, um, if I originally had on my balancing scale my x and my counter, and then over here I have five counters. And we said, okay, we're going to get rid of one counter from each side. And what are we left with? Now, it's still in balance. As long as I take one thing off one side and one thing off the other, I'm still in balance, and x 
is balancing out with the four. So the four counters are the solution. And then if you come down and check yourself, if you know that it's x plus one equals five, and we're saying that x equals four, then when I come over here and I plug in four plus one, it should equal five. So five equals five, check mark. Is this sentence true? Absolutely. All right, that was the end of the um, examples that they gave us to work with. In class tomorrow, we'll be doing the other examples. Hopefully you understand the concept of using the mat. Um, it's really helpful. Uh, if you'd like to hang on for just another moment, I'll go ahead and show you another example. Just so you can get used to seeing that balancing in the mats. Okay, I always like using the scale because I think that um, balancing on a scale makes sense to me. And I'm going to use the mats, which are the white um, squares here, to represent the mats that they like to use as well. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to make this equation x plus 3 whoops, equals, um, I don't want to get too big, so how about we just say 6. So over here we have, let's say our line, because I've been talking about using lines to represent x, so we might as well stick with it. And then for the three ones, I've been using my circles, so why not stick with that? Here are my three circles. So this is one side of the scale, and this is going to be my other side of the scale. See how that works out? So over here, we're going to have six circles, okay? So we have our x plus 3 on this side, on the left, and then on the right-hand side, we're going to have our six ones. And so we're saying that whatever x plus 3 is, it has to equal 6. So whatever x is, plus 3 will equal the 6. Now the way that they just told us was, how about we get rid of the extras? Let's leave the variable by itself. Let's get the variable by itself. So if I'm going to take 1 away from here, I need to take 1 away from here. If I'm going to take another 1 away from here, I need to take another 1 away from the other side. Because what I do to one side of the scale, I have to do the other or they're going to tip. So if I'm taking this last one off from this side, I need to take one more off from this side. And so we end up with our x equals 3. So x equals 3. Now to make sure that it works, we're going to check our work. x plus 3 equals 6. We're going to see if this works. x we said was 3. So if we do 3 plus 3, Will that equal 6? Yes, it will. Check mark. So I hope that that extra example helped. Um, we'll go over more in class. I'll see you in school. Bye-bye.